everybody. Welcome to the Three Gun Show. This is episode number 278, and I'm your host, Dave Hartman. My special guest in this episode is Arizona open shooter Matt Kitzmiller. Matt is a cool dude that I met a couple months ago in Phoenix after I took Keith Garcia's Champions Are Made in Practice Three Gun class, which I highly recommend, by the way. Uh, Matt and I hit it off when uh, we had a podcast with our buddy, Kim Peterson. Good old Kim. Missed your buddy. And uh, and so when I found out that uh, Matt was going to be here in Austin for uh, work, I invited him over to the Three Gun Show World Headquarters here in the studio for a chat. And we covered a ton of great topics in this podcast right here. And Matt tells us a bunch of great things that he's learned along the way with each challenge. Uh, what I really like about Matt in this in this podcast is he brought like a bulleted list of like, hey, these are topics you've talked about on the show, and this is the experience that I've had with them, and this is what I learned. So uh, you're going to hear all that, and we cover a ton of great topics, um, wide-ranging. You're going to love it. But before we get into that, check out 3GunShowProShop.com for all your 3Gun needs. We're loading in new products all the time from a lot of your favorite brands, including JP Rifles and Vortex Optics. So think of us when you're making your off-season upgrades. And uh, just shoot me an email if there's something that you uh, you want from one of our suppliers that you don't see. Just dave at 3gunshow.com. We're adding new stuff all the time. Eventually, it's going to be your one-stop shop for all the 3Gun goodness. This podcast is brought to you by the good folks at JP Enterprises the finest rifle components built by people that actually shoot the games you do. They don't sell gimmicks, just the most accurate accurate and softest shooting rifles that anyone could want, and they do it with a smile. After years of buying select JP parts to finish off my own builds, in fact, I was counting. I have JP parts in four rifles and one whole JP rifle. Uh, that would be my LRP07 in 6.5 Creedmoor which I'm going to transform into a 308 for a match coming up soon. I recommend both. If you are a builder, if you're a build-it-yourself kind of person and you need a new three-gun blaster in the offseason, pick up a crowd-treated super match barrel and all the other go-fast parts from JP. If you're not into building and you just want to buy it now and be ready to race, JP's got you covered there as well. Either way, visit jprifles.com. That's all that we've got for now. So enjoy this wide ranging podcast with Matt Kitzmiller. Go. Matt, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, sir. You kind of want to press a button, don't you? I definitely want to press a button. Which button do you identify with the most? This one right here. (laughs) And the one to the right of it is the, is that? Yeah, that's the, you screw up. Oh, Oh, see, I already, I'm already wrong. So, yeah. Matt, you're a listener of the podcast. You enjoy the soundboard? I do. Do you think it's added something to the show? I was worried that it would be like a, a just a distraction. I think it's going to add something to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Once we figure the buttons <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah. I thought for sure. I know that, that Adam's been requesting this, and yeah. you've been, I, I, I listened to this that podcast recently, and he was, you, you basically said, well, you know, you can always donate that. You know, somebody's got to pay for it. Oh, you heard it? Yeah. Well, I, I think you said that on the podcast. Yeah, right? I did. Yeah. I, I don't remember. That was years ago, though. Oh, Or really? maybe it was a year ago. Hmm. Well, either way. I listened to the the Jay Christensen podcast and I, I saw you guys kind of, you know, messing with it a little bit. And I thought for sure last time I heard Adam come on that he was going to just kill it, but a little underwhelming. A couple, a couple of, so he's, he's, Adam has an amazing amount of restraint. Mm. I don't, I know me, <laughs> like I know that I've got <laughs> buttons in front of me and they need to be pushed. Yeah. Yep. So <clears throat> in every way possible. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Boy, that's an understatement, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a, uh, I, I like pushing buttons. I like uh, flicking switches. If there's something there, I'm going to see what it does. That was cool. So I was just telling you about, um, uh, I used to work at Lockheed Martin mm-hmm. and uh, some of the stuff there was really cool because it, it was built in the Cold War mm. and like one button did something massive. So it was like uh being in Tomb Raider, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, I wonder what this thing does. ka You're like, holy crap, <laughs> like that three-ton overhead crane just start moving. You know, it was, it was fun, dude. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I like it, too. I mean, I'm an electrician by trade, 
I'm going oh, to tell you all about you, So you know what trade. all the buttons do. Yeah, yeah. I remember listening to you. You had a podcast. I think it was the Jay Christensen podcast where you said something about, I don't know why people say the by, by trade. trade. I don't. I know you don't come out by birth. Yeah, by birth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're not an electrician by birth? No, I'm not. I'm yeah. an electrician by trade, which means to me, it means that I, I'm an electrician by my schooling and by my learning, mm-hmm. but I'm not actually a practicing electrician right now uh oh is that what that means that's so, that's how i that's how i interpret it huh interesting yeah so like with with me like i train a lot of electricians and i, I train union electricians which are some of the most proud people on planet earth yeah that's that's true so making the distinction between whether you're an electrician or not before you train them goes a long way so i used to do as a little cred it does yeah i mean we go through a five-year apprenticeship and, you know, it takes some time to, to get where you want to get. So you, you, when you have people that have gone through the same, the same kind of schooling and, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing, um, there's a mutual respect there. It's so like, it's like a military camaraderie it is. kind of thing, right? It is. Yeah. It's like a nod, like, yep, we've been through the same thing, the same program. We know the same language. Right. And, and the language is, is really it because, um, with, with electricity, there's a lot of people that think they understand it. Mm-hmm. And they really don't. They understand enough where we call those patients, right? <laughs> End up in the emergency room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you're having those conversations, it's like as an electrician, you're you're constantly thinking in the back of your head: Am I am I wasting my time talking to this person? Do they know what they're talking mm-hmm. about? It's like when you're talking to somebody about shooting. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, yeah, I, I shoot. I'm a shooter. Okay, do you yeah. compete or yeah. do you shoot your Glock? at the desert or wherever, you know, in the woods, if you're yep. here in, in Texas or, yep. you know, do you shoot or do you shoot? Yep. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, last time I was in Utah visiting my dad, bless his heart. He, uh, um, asked me if I could show him once again, how to clean his Glock 19. I'm like, Yeah, sure. No problem. We're cleaning other stuff here. Happy to show you. Mm-hmm. So we did that and I'm like, oh man, this thing is like, you know, it's like the dinner plates were eaten off of so clean. He's like, well, I shot it a lot. I'm like, how much is a lot, Dad? And he's like, hmm, 150 rounds. <laughs> like, Over the course since, of three years. Yeah, since the last <laughs> yeah. time I was there, which was like two years ago. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, that is a lot for my dad. Right. Right. That's not a lot for you and me. Right. right. Like, we lose that much in the wash, you know? Yeah. It's a decent <laughs> like, practice session. Yeah, it is a shooting, decent practice shooting, session. Shooting, draw, so. shoot one. <laughs> yeah. So, it's uh, it's all relative. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Well, so welcome, first of all, to the Three Gun Show Studio. Yeah, thanks. Love it. Does it look better on camera than it does in person? Um, no, I, I, I kind of I figured it out. When, when I first went to the dissident headquarters, I was expecting like something grand. And then uh-huh. when I got in there, I was like, holy smokes, you guys do everything you do in this, yeah. this small quarters. And I was blown away. So I've been, I've I kind of expected it. That's the first time I went to Hayes Custom Guns. Mm-hmm. They um, they actually were in Pflugerville, mm-hmm. which uh, you just came from, mm-hmm. and uh, they were in a very shady part of Pflugerville. <laughs> right, and uh, they were with uh, I. I assume the people that were their neighbors were repairing cars. I don't want to say that they were dismantling them, mm. but we you never know. You don't ask questions, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, contrast, and then they put out, like, some of the most fantastic pistols on earth and then contrast that to, like, where they're at now. It's like, wow, you've come a long way. Right. <laughs> you know? So it is It is kind of interesting, like, what you can do with camera angles. Right. You know, like, I clean up to this box right here. Mm-hmm. And then I don't worry about the rest. You can see it's, like, kind of a kind right. of a mess of gun parts. That's funny. Mm-hmm. That's super funny. Yeah. So you're, you're on work. Mm-hmm. And uh, you took this opportunity to come by, which is really cool. Yeah. Got some flights dialed in, so it worked out just perfect. Nice. Mm-hmm. Well, well, happy to have you here. One thing I really appreciate about you, Matt, is that you give a lot of feedback for the show. Mm-hmm. And not only do you, you know, send like Instagram messages or text messages or whatever, just whenever we're talking, but um, but you're like, hey, I'm coming out, and these are the seven topics that I <laughs> take issue with on the podcast <laughs> that I'm going br- to be bringing with me. So be yeah. ready to talk about them. <laughs> yeah. I still had, I still had, uh, I, I have quite a few items from our last podcast that I could have easily bled over into this list, but you know, I've listened to, I don't know, five or six podcasts since then. Yeah. Um, your podcast. And yeah, yeah. Just, I hear it. And, and if I sit here and, and I just try to muster up something, 
it's not nearly as effective as me taking notes and thinking about, you mm-hmm. know, what kind of things I'd like to talk about. Yeah, usually when I when I talk to people on the range, you know, a lot of times someone will take issue with something that, that I've said. <clears throat> and I appreciate that you put them in like a bolded list. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're like, all right, number one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Like like the trade thing, for example. Yep. That's something I'm going to have to pay attention to now because I never thought of it as like contextual, as like uh, someone currently practicing or if they were they were doing that at one point or now they're in some sort of different yeah you know, different I think, type of job i think the um i think the example that you'd use was an engineer mm-hmm. and yeah my, well that's what i'm trying to think of so it was my buddy bill that i worked at uh lockheed with and he said he was an engineer by trade and i'm trying to recall what he was doing at that time cuz he did several things over the time that i knew him excuse me and uh, one of them was like um failure analysis mm-hmm. for mechanical things right <laughs> And uh, he worked behind a closed door. <laughs> but um, so I'm trying to remember if that's what he was doing at the time. And like, so he was doing failure analysis, but he's an engineer by trade, right? Mm-hmm. So that in that context, it would make sense. And now I feel like a tool for saying it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard you. I was, I remember exactly where I was when I heard it. And I was like, I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm going to have to write this down. I remember when I got to a stoplight, I wrote it down. <laughs> well, I think about that all the time. Like whenever I'm trying to like come up with a word, I'm like, someone out there is in like a Ford F-150. They got their eye sync on right now. They're on their way to work and they're shouting at the radio, the word for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's about right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I was listening to it. And I'm like, oh boy. I'm I'm gonna text them. And I thought about it. I was like, nope. I'm gonna wait till I see him. On, and I got a microphone in front of me. We're gonna we're gonna clear this up. We're gonna school that boy. We're gonna school this boy right yeah. here in Texas. My my favorite one is, uh, um, I had Ken Nelson on, and uh, I said that he um, pontificates on Facebook. Right. Mm, that's a I big could word. tell by the 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 look on your face that you know what that word means. <laughs> I was not correct in my understanding of that word. And, uh, later on when I looked it up, I felt really, really bad. <laughs> I was like, that, I can tell. Yeah. So Ken like had like a little micro outburst on that one, but I was like, I can tell by his reaction that that word doesn't mean what I thought it meant. Right. I wonder what he thinks it means. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so it was, it was kind of embarrassing, but, uh, uh, you know, Shango boom on Instagram. Uh huh. Yeah. He, uh, well, every three to four months or so, he'll just send me that word as a text, pontificate. <laughs> I'm like, bro, that was years ago. Like, let it go. <laughs> I do the same thing. I, I don't know how many times I've I've bothered um, Ryan Kleckner, but <laughs> I he wrote he wrote a bit, and I hope he's listening to this. He's probably gonna be like, oh, that's the guy. I can't stand him. But he wrote something, <laughs> and he he wrote an article for um, I think it was in Recoil, and you know I I, subs- I I get that magazine regularly, and I read you know, cover to cover, book in to book in every time. And he had wrote, I think the, the, um, the article was called get your ass off the bench or get off the bench or something like mm. that. And it was like a turning point for me because when I read it, I'm like, you know, I'm thinking back of not only when I'm zeroing guns, but you know, earlier in my shooting career, um, I would, I would, you know, air quote practice on a bench shooting yeah. and with a bipod, you know, and l- listening to that, it kind of, changed a lot of what I did. So I'd see him put a post on Instagram and I wrote, I'd write like, you know, get your ass off the bench or hashtag get your ass off the bench. And he wrote back one time and he's like, that was a long go long. I wrote that article a long time ago or something like that. And I was like, okay, got it. Stop saying that. Yeah. (laughs) Like bro, it it affected me in a positive way. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Sean go boom. His, uh, what's his, what's his name? Sean Burroughs, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So he, his uh his little Yoda Boba Fett thing that he oh my god a yeah days, that was the that was with the three gun show yeah. theme song that was bad at- <laughs> did <laughs> yeah. I do it right I don't think yeah I did that was right. that was pretty good yeah I liked it yeah that was pretty neat what he yeah. did though. that was pretty cool yeah it was it was pretty epic he's he's done a couple mashups of the uh of the three gun show he did a or of the theme song <clears throat> he did one that um like way back this is like probably two years ago when I was at the uh, uh, range with Chad Torres mm-hmm. is when we started doing the range day thing. Just, oh yeah. 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 yeah and yeah, I, would, I never got the joke. I, I, I see range day hashtag range day all the time. Yeah, so, I, I never really got, never really got it. So what it was, was, uh, um, I think I don't even remember it. Like I was just like caffeinated up when we, when I was going to the range with Chad, uh, one time and 
I was doing the uh, the Instagram story of like, oh, hey, you know, it's 5 a.m. We're leaving for the range. And, you know, now we're at the range. Hey, Chad's here, you know. And then I'm riding the back of Chad's truck as we're painting stuff. And I just was like, range day, you know. And and so it was like just a high-pitched shout, right? Mm-hmm. And so Sean took that and he put it over like the, uh, the Three Gun Show theme music, like this right here. Mm-hmm. And so it was just like this. And then it was going, range day. <laughs> range day <laughs> range day and that, that was it it was just like the entire song and like every three beats were me saying uh range day like that and uh it was freaking hilarious he's like hey you gotta use this as a theme song in the next podcast and again this is a couple years ago i was like okay cool send it to me and he sent it to me and it was like corrupt somehow uh i think it was because like I, at the time i was using a a PC and he was using an iPhone mm-hmm. <clears throat> to edit it. So it, it didn't work out, but like that, like sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll be able to hear that. And it's weird. Like when someone takes you out of context and like mashes you up like that and it just sounds, it just sounds funny, but I can't like unhear that. Anyway, that's where the range day thing uh, came from. It started from that. And then just the hashtag range day. And now People just shout like, hey, what day is it? And range day. And then they tag three on show. And I share every single one of them because I'm happy to because I think that's a cool thing that we've started. But right. But um, yeah, so that's where it came from. So, yeah, Sean has done mashups before. <laughs> yeah. He seems like a pretty cool guy. I yeah, met him. It's kind of funny. Like he must have like uh, a lot of uh, dad time where he just like wants to be alone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, what can I, what can I do with Dave's theme song?" <laughs> right, and edit it on the iPhone. But the uh, the little Yoda dude, that mm-hmm. was hilarious. And then, if if you recall, that little little Yoda is like flicking switches, right? Mm-hmm. Just as I said, yeah, there's buttons in front of him. Got to push them. Yep, got to do it. Got to do it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, so what's going on in Phoenix? Um, you guys still shooting? Oh yeah. Nonstop, buddy. You guys don't have a off season? Never. Nope. I'm on a I'm on a six week. I fly so from the week before Thanksgiving, I was in um North Carolina for the week working. And then I came home for a couple of days and I um I went to New Orleans for Thanksgiving to see my mom, take my wife to uh to see New Orleans for the first time, which was like we were talking. What'd she think? She loved it. She loved it. She was she was blown. I mean, I don't think she's ever seen like even a pelican. Yeah. So yeah, my mom picked us up at the airport, <laughs> took us to a um, this nice seafood restaurant, and straight out of the gate, there's you know pelicans and, and egrets and and all kinds of animals all over the place. And she's blown away. And the food, you know, food's phenomenal. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we gained some solid weight there. Um, but then I I got home I got home Sunday night this last Sunday night. Um, about six or seven o'clock and then I was on on a plane on my way here Monday morning again. So I'm I'm on an, I have, you know, the next three weeks I'm still traveling. So I have six weeks solid. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'll go home um this weekend I'll go home and I'll I'll shoot a um a rifle match and then I think I'll I miss a match because we're going to San Diego for a tattoo appointment. But yeah, I'm steady practicing, you know, when I'm home. I'm grabbing my guns. I'm I'm kinda sometimes I'll I'll fly with them. Um, maybe even bring my pistol and, and a holster so I can dry fire a little bit, but I'm traveling with a colleague right now. So it's kind of different. And of course he's from California where my, my company's based out of California. Oh, so yeah. yeah, I gotta be a little careful. That's about, a little hard. Mm-hmm, yeah. 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 But yeah, we don't stop. We, we shoot nonstop. Um, it's still, it's pretty chilly right now. It's, Is it? What's, yeah. ch- what's chilly to you? 75. Chilly to me realistically is, um, I'd say anything less than 60 is chilly. Oh, okay. Yeah. but that, right, That's chilly. Yeah. It's not cold. It's chilly. But right now, I mean, it's it's in the 40s at night. Right. Yeah. And, and in the 70s, it's probably pretty comparable to what it is here, just mm-hmm. minus the humidity. Yeah. The the uh, temperature swings in the desert are, are way cool because it's like, you know, in the in the middle of the day, it can be 100 degrees. And at night, it's 40 degrees. And yep. in some areas, you know, not, not obviously not all the time, but- that fascinates me, right? Because there's nothing to keep the uh, <clears throat> the heat in. It's just atmosphere just going out. But here um, in the summertime, if it's like 100 degrees during the day, it's like 92 at night. Mm-hmm. Shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that is not something I'm Can used to as a break? Colorado boy. Right. Well, you don't get a break. It's like you get an eight-degree break, you know? Like, mm-hmm. in like yeah, in Colorado, it's the same thing. Like, on as soon as the sun goes down, you're like, thank goodness we can go sit on the porch again. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I was pretty. I was pretty impressed with um, at the, the Colorado Three Gun Championship. I was pretty impressed. That was the first time I've ever spent any significant amount of time. You know, anything other than going to the Denver airport. I guess is what mm-hmm. I mean by significant amount of time. That's the first time I ever spent any time um, in in that area in Colorado. Period. And man, I was I was in love with the weather, dude. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you were in Colorado Springs too. And Colorado mm-hmm. Springs is just gorgeous. Yeah, I, I I had no idea. I mean, I my mom's an air traffic controller. By trade. <laughs> <laughs> so she doesn't do it anymore is what you're saying. No, she's retired. <laughs> okay, okay. There's another see, application See how I there. caught up on that one? Yeah. God. Yeah. You are a teacher, aren't you? Yeah. So <laughs> so it, that that pretty much makes her a, uh, well, she's basically a meteorologist, you know, oh, okay. by default, which kind of makes me like sort of like a, a, a meteorologist in training. Yeah. But any of my friends that are listening, they know that they're probably laughing about right now because um. I'm like I'm obsessed with the weather. Like mm-hmm. I know what the weather's going to be today here, tomorrow at my house, tomorrow here, no tomorrow kidding. everywhere. Yeah, I just I don't really I don't really look at, at the weather on the news, but I, I just I'm a frequent violator on the on the Weather Channel app. And I was I so I saw what the weather was going to be like in Colorado Springs, and I was like, man, it's like over a hundred degrees here in Phoenix. Like that's crazy. That's going to get in the sixties and the seventies. So yeah, I. I just the fact that it like kind of sprinkled at least a little bit every single day yeah. and oh man, it was phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. It in years past we had like monsoons coming through when you know, when you're not talking sprinkles, you're talking like buckets of water being right. dropped. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Did you ever hear the the story? I think I might have told this in the match recon of uh Parker staying in the travel trailer during the Colorado Oregon Championship. Mm-mm. That's where I met him. I remember meeting him there. Yeah. So that was that was this year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So not, was it not last year, but the year before that was when we had the, uh, the I think, is when we had the big monsoon. I don't know. They, they're starting to blend together. So it was either 17 or 18. And um, I was, like, people were on, on the stage of shooting. Luckily, I was done shooting. I was going to go be taking some photos. And then, you know, I'm in my pickup truck. And all of a sudden, it just, like, starts, like, just dumping where, you know, you can't see the the hood in front of you. You're like, okay, well, I guess I'm just parked here. But, you know, I could see the travel trailer where I was at and like, okay, well, it's it's not blowing away or anything. <laughs> and uh, But it was just dumping so much water. And if you've ever been in a travel trailer when it's raining, it it's very loud. Mm. So Parker's in his um, kennel inside the travel trailer. He's got the AC on. He's listening to country music because that's what he likes. <laughs> and, uh, so after it stops raining, I go to, to check on him and let him out. And that poor little dude shit himself. Oh boy. In the trailer. Oh boy. I know. And so he's like a seven or eight year old dog at the time, depending on what year. And he doesn't do that anymore. It's not, it's not one of his things. Like he hasn't done that since he was like a little, little, little dude. Mm -hmm. I didn't leave him in there for like 10 hours. It was like an hour. Right. He was so scared. that He pooped himself. (laughs) It was crazy. And then I had to clean up poop, which was awesome. But, um, yeah, that, so do you remember Pike's peak, that big mountain? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's where all the weather comes from. So if you're like, you know, meteorolo- meteorological dork, mm-hmm. <clears throat> stare at that thing. Cause that, whatever happens up there, hour and a half, it's going to be happening at that range. Right. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I had Tony Litton as a, as a tour guide yeah. going through there and he was pointing out, you know, all the, the geological mysteries that are taking place through there <laughs> and how, how things aren't growing at this elevation and. Yeah, yeah, tree line. And he was kind of, he was kind of like the, the, I don't know, like the, the storm whisperer. You know, he's <laughs> like, hey man, we got to get our stuff in the truck. It's gonna start raining for sure. It's gonna start raining. And I'm looking around, like, what are you talking about? Like, it's not on the forecast, bro. Trust me, I've looked 18 times already this morning. <laughs> it's sure enough, man. It, you know, every yeah. time, yeah, we had to pull our stuff in. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. I mean, once you know, once you've lived there long enough, you know where the weather's coming from. So you just kind of turn yourself that direction yeah and uh and see yeah it's i haven't figured out i haven't figured out texas yet like where everything comes from <clears throat> it's a tough one yeah that's a that's a different that's a, that's a whole different animal when when you get into like i lived in in oklahoma city for a little while and i got to see you know the the weather where it's perfectly sunny in the middle of, of summer and all of a sudden it just rains like you don't see a rain cloud yeah anywhere yeah and it, louisiana's like that too i lived there quite a while and yeah, same thing. Just like captures enough moisture in the air or something like that. Yeah, something. Um yeah, I haven't I haven't taken my meteorology degree to that that extent <laughs> quite yet, but well, 
it's when you were when you were talking about that, I was thinking. So my my dad uh, worked at uh, Denver Water for like 30, 35 years or something like that, mm-hmm. and so he's like really into water cleanliness and um, filtering water and stuff like that. So anytime we went to like the mountains or whatever, we'd bring pumps with us and everything. Mm-hmm. And this is like in the eighties, nineties. So pumps were size of two liter bottles instead of like the small little stair pens you can carry with you now. Right. <clears throat> but, um, he was constantly like, and you know, so this is in Colorado. So any body of water we went to, he would tell you how many cubic acres were in, it at that moment he's like now usually it's this but right now you know he was like that kind of encyclopedic knowledge of like all the reservoirs in colorado because there's not a lot of lakes but there's a lot of reservoirs right and so um i i kind of have like the same thing like if if i'm like near a creek i'll just stop and stare at it and like huh i wonder and then you look up and you're like oh okay so this thing cut this path over I don't know, like the last 350 <laughs> millennia, you know, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And you just start to, uh, watch like the erosion. You're like, okay, so there's the water cuts and everything. So for me, it's water for you. It's, it's weather. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's weird how our parents have like that, that type of effect on them. Oh man. I remember being quizzed by my mom. What kind of clouds that? That's oh, cum- no kidding. That's a cumulus cloud. No, it's not. It's a cumulonimbus cloud. Do you know what nimbus means? And, 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 you know, and she's going to embarrass me. Yeah. Yeah. Nimbus means rain in Latin. Remember that, you know, it's, it's never going to go away. Like the most useless <laughs> bit of information on planet earth, but yep, I know it. Yep. It's fun. It's cool. Does that help you at all with shooting? Um, do you it, know, it do helps you know what the weather does to your, your projectiles or anything? Um, I know what wind does. Yeah. But I don't shoot in a whole lot of rain. Um, I mean, the few times that I've shot in rain, it's been like I'm concerned about it, mm-hmm. and cause I don't I don't know what my gear is gonna do. I don't know if everything's gonna like just stop working. I don't know if my dots, you know, I shoot open, so I don't know if all my dots are gonna stop working. Um, I I see most of them are, are water resistant, and some of them are waterproof, and blah 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 blah. But yeah, when I when I know that there's rain, like at a Vortex shooter source, when I knew there was gonna be rain, I was freaking out. And John Murray, you know, he and I traveled together and he was constantly, you know, oh, it's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. You know, and I'm like, dude, I'm worried about it. Like, yeah. it's not something that I ever do. Does John John live there in Phoenix with you? He does. Yeah. Where's he, he from? Um, he's, f- I think he's originally from San Diego. Oh, okay. Um, but John's been, John's been in the Valley for, I would, I would, I couldn't even say how long, but he's been there for a long time. He's been with the, the, um, he's works for the, the DPS. Mm. So John's a, uh, a state trooper. Um, like he's a lieutenant or a sergeant, um, one of those two, but he's been around, I think he's been doing that job for 20 plus years. So Got it. yeah, he's, he's been around, you know, he did the whole three gun nation thing. So he's, he's been a, a really cool friend and a, a solid mentor for me, um, helping me out a lot, but he started shooting open. So, I mean, Uh-oh. yeah, we shot, we shot our first match, um, about two months ago and, and he whooped on me. <laughs> I, <laughs> With, with with club matches like like I'm sure most of us we don't have you know long you know drawn out 70 second 80 second stages we got 30 second stages so if you slip up once and you're shooting with people that know what they're doing you're yeah. pretty much toast so yeah the the first one um he shot he shot I think he's shot two matches now we shot a couple of weeks ago but yeah he's he's made the jump to open for 2020 he's got his dissident gun and yeah he's all he's all dialed in and it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting when he when he gets it when he gets it together open is thick this year oh dude and it's gonna be even thicker next year yeah i love it i'm all about it you know i i like to watch uh so uh actually i had thanksgiving with the dissident boys Mm -hmm. and um um they or i was talking to mike and i was telling him like dude your instagram stories like Mm -hmm. are legit Mm-hmm. He's like, well, just test firing. I'm like, no, 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 no. You tag the owner of that gun. Like, I love that. Like, that's yeah. that's uh, a- extra intel. You know, oh, yeah. like, oh my god, that guy's going to open. Like, oh right. my god, yeah, that guy's going to open. Yeah, Atlas did that. Atlas did that either today or yesterday. Um, I've been traveling a lot, so all the days are kind of running together. But they tagged um, Mike, one of one of our shooters at, at Atlas. They tagged him on a on a limited gun. That I've been watching, you know, they put it on the on the on the Black Friday or Cyber Monday or whatever it was. I I saw this gun. It was a you know a, a bicolored gun, and I was like, oh man, that thing's sharp. 
Yeah, and I saw it this morning that it's going out to him. They tagged him on it. So I think that's super cool. That's, yeah. I mean, because, I mean, especially like, you know, shooting for dissident and, and it's easy to sell dissident guns because they're, they're, they're awesome. And it's, I'm, I'm lucky that the people that, that support me, um, they make great stuff. So it's, it's easy to, it's like, it's like selling crack to a crackhead. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have to work hard. Like it's not, it's not hard work. They mm-hmm. pretty much sell themselves, but you can kind of push them along and, um, yeah, so with with the dissident guns, I completely lost what I was gonna say. <laughs> uh, seeing new shooters yep. on the story. Yep, test fire new on the shooters story. are so great, and yep, <laughs> yep, I love it. No, I, I mean, I I dig it. I wonder if I would dig it if I didn't do the show, or if I would just be like, I don't know who that guy is or anything. But because I I do like pay attention to like practice score results and you know, who's shooting where and who's tagging people in there and they're this and just trying to get it like a lay of the shooting scenes in different areas and stuff like that. I do enjoy it. Like when you see like, uh, oh, three, three dissonant guns are going to Florida. It's like, oh, what are, what's going on over there? <laughs> you know, I think that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I mean, um, I, another another guy I know, um, Mike Pan, just made the jump to, to open, just got his dissonant gun. I think he's shooting a chaos um, pistol. And he, I think he made his, his debut at, what's that match? It was just in, um, in Georgia. Uh, Fort Benning? Yeah, the Fort Benning match. He, he's, I think he did pretty good, finished, you know, top, top 10, maybe top five in mm-hmm. open. And yeah, it's awesome. I, I, it's, you know, working with Kim, Kim made the jump, Kim Peterson made the jump to, to open this year. And that's been just a blast, just kind of bringing him through and, and helping him out as best I can and showing him, you know, how and what's going on. It's, it's awesome. It's fun. It's, yeah. it's really neat because I think a lot of tech ops guys, um, when they come over to open, I think they're starting to figure it out now that it's not strap some, some dots on everything so much easier. Yeah you there's there's a lot of there's a lot of preparation you have to do and there's a lot of time that as a tech op shooter you have you have some recalibration time and and that's something that i think a lot of people don't understand and i've been talking to a couple of my friends about this recently where if you're gonna if you're gonna shoot you know you're gonna shoot an array and you're gonna stuff some quads when you're stuffing quads you're you're i most good tech op shooters that i watch shoot they're they're looking up and surveying the field. Yep. While you know they're they're jacking a few in, and then they're surveying the field and they're jacking mm-hmm. a few in. But with open, you don't have that luxury. So no, you don't you don't get that that little reset time, that little recalibration time to 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 recalibrate. So it's pedal to the metal the whole time. Um, unless you want to finish lower in the ranks, you have to you have to be you know on your game. So with John and and um you know and John's John's a little a little bit ahead of the the game because he's been in the business for so long. But I think a lot of us, we have to figure out how to just stay smooth and stay consistent. And that's, that's my big goal for, for 2020 is just staying consistent. Um, I have no interest in, in staying the course for an entire, you know, major match. Like I have zero, like if I wanted to do that, I, I would, I would definitely play in a different division, but with open, you make, you make the wrong mistake a couple times and, and you know you're pretty much toast. So and there's there's I don't know there's there's not a whole lot of room to recalibrate there. So it's well especially now that there's like so much heat, right? Mm-hmm. Like maybe four years ago you could have slipped up a little bit, right? But now you can't. Like there's no there's no way. Yeah, it's awesome. I love <laughs> it. I love it. Like we were talking earlier about bags and um and getting gear and and you know touching back to what Adam was talking about on uh on the last show he was on talking about. Um, I mean, it was two shows ago and he was talking about the kneeling bipods. Yeah. Like we saw that he and I squatted together, um, at Surefire at Surefire. Yeah. And you know, some of our, some of our squad mates were, were using Scott Green's kneeling bipod. <laughs> and I remember the, the first time that I actually thought about it, we had a, I don't know, 50, somewhere between 50, 70 yard plate rack and uh, you know, Jeff Chafin or, or Scott Green, somebody had offered one up and, hey, you know, you want to use this? And I was like, I kind of do, but I've never used it before. And I know how I've gone down this road. Oh, you yeah. Know? Try, trying new gear on the clock? At a major. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks. So, dude, I had like a 10 minute conversation with James Gill when he was like, just use my D60. I'm like, I don't want to use your D60. I've never used your D60. He's like, right. I've run that in machine guns. I'm like, well, now I really don't want to use it. Right. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, so 
I, I understand what you mean by like new gear. And if, if you're new and you're listening and you're like, what do they mean by new gear? Like never test new gear on the clock. Right. You know, maybe, maybe a club match, you know, if, if club matches are where you test things and where you try to improve, which is what we were talking about before we got started here, mm-hmm. but never at a major match. Yeah. I would, I, I, I busted mine out. Um, I busted mine out last week, last weekend. Um, so I your like bipod, a, my yeah, because you did end up getting one, right? I did, yeah. So I'm, I got home and before we get to that part, did you end up using it in the match? No. Okay. Do you wish you did? No. Okay. You know what? I I thought about it and it was kind of messing with my head a little bit because I saw I was the first person to shoot this this particular stage. It was it was the first one up, and I nailed it. I mean, um, I I did really well at that stage. I don't know if it was a stage win, but it was pretty high up there. And I shot that thing. It's even offhand. worse. You'd have been trying something new right and first right and then everybody goes after you like oh that's how i was supposed to use that right yeah i had i had one makeup shot and just took my time and and ping 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 um but yeah the kneeling bipod so i I strapped it on a couple last weekend um so i I just started shooting for for vortex um recently super recently so i'm playing with the razors and and i i had that kneeling bipod in my um in my my range bag so i grabbed it out next to my sling that i that i carry because <laughs> it weighs nothing yep carry that <laughs> sling everywhere so i i was like oh, i'll give this thing a shot and uh i was shooting next to a bench you know kneeling of course and i of course i encountered something i never would have thought of my shell ejected and then bounced off of something and hit me right in the face and burned my cheek <laughs> <laughs> And I was, you know, you never, you never really think about something like that until you're there. It's yeah, like, it's, sure. it's, you know, the, the couple of days before that I was shooting left-handed and are shooting, um, weak, weak hand and with my rifle and just started burning the shit out of my arm. And it's like, it, you never really do that a whole lot, but sometimes I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. so I, I've got a nice scar on my arm now, uh, from the summer at the, uh, the vortex extreme mm-hmm. six, six, five Creedmoor. Yep. You know, and I was just up against like a, a little dirt mound mm-hmm. and I hit that dirt mound, came right and rolled right down into where my pocket or my, the pocket of where my arm met that dirt. Right. And, uh, I was looking for my next target. I yep. could, didn't have time to sit and go, owie. And yeah, it's funny when that happens in real time. Cause you feel yeah. it, you feel it, you feel it burning you. Oh yeah. But by the same token, it's like, I got, I got work to do. That's I'm like, right. I'll, I'll bitch about this exactly. later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no factor right yeah but the open game I'm, I'm really looking forward to 2020 um i've added a couple more matches i'm gonna try to shoot the uh the jkm match i'm gonna try to shoot the um the wisconsin three gun championships up there with adam um there's i don't think there's too many more new ones i'm gonna shoot i'm gonna follow up some of the matches that i shot this year and yeah i'm looking forward to it it's gonna be fun but i'm gonna, I'm gonna try to head out head out east and northeast a little bit more this year nice yeah yeah, there. I still want to get to Banning, and I want to do uh, USPSA Multi Gun Nationals mm-hmm. in Florida. I don't know if either of those are going to work out this year, mm-hmm. but um, but yeah, I'd love to do those. Mm-hmm. I'll be at JKM again. Yeah, Faux show. Mm-hmm. You're gonna run a? Is that the one you run like a, a three or four hour podcast yeah. live? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we start. We accidentally started a little early this year, so <laughs> 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 I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, upon all the, uh, all the other jobs that Tiffany has, uh, Dakota's mom, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to give her the job of like, just like now, Dave now, <laughs> right. <laughs> or at least, uh, maybe I'll draw a line on the, uh, the round that we're supposed to start. Cause yeah, it did end up being like five hours last time. And that was a long time. It was fun. <clears throat> I, I, it was fun listening to people come in and out of the truck. Yeah, and people leaving and oh no, it, that that was Gen three. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that was Gen three. That one was awesome but, too. Yeah, so at, at JK <laughs> JKM they build like a uh, a tower, okay, and it's it's a uh, uh, shoot help uh, help me out scaffolding. Mm-hmm. So we build a, a scaffolding tower, and then uh, so now we're above the shooting the shooting area, and then we have speakers so all the shooters and all the participants can oh, hear what, what we're talking saying. about. Yeah, yeah it's, I, I it's just like this, but imagine like an entire field of you know, 120 shooters right. in front of you. Was was Dustin Sanchez with you? Yeah. Yeah, I think I remember. I, I, yep. I remember seeing a picture of that now. Yep, Sanchez. Oh, yeah, Sanchez and his daughter. Yeah, yep. that's it. I was going to say there she was a kid. She just there. held still a far or long enough for that photo, and she's like, all right, I'm, I, need, I need mom now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, JKM's a, uh, it's a unique um, 
experience because of the uh, the type of match, the five stages on one day and the shoot off on the second day. And then uh, I enjoy it because, you know, three gun shows got a pretty big part in, in that second day. So of the shoot off. So nice. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I think fun. Uh, I think th- this was the third year. I think they're used to us now. First year, people were not excited about hearing their name while they were shooting. Oh, yeah. So now we have a lot of disclaimers like, hey, if you hear anything over the loudspeaker, keep going. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the guy, the guy with the big beard. That's mm-hmm. the one that's going to tell you to stop if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I know. The first year, we'd be like, uh, you know, and, and Kitz Miller drops a quad, and then you just, like, stop and look and turn around at us. It's like, uh, bro, <laughs> we didn't tell you to stop. Like, we're just describing what you're doing. I think it was uh I think it was Lainey Barnes that was talking about when she was when she was uh abroad. I want to say it was Germany or I was uh Tracy. Oh, okay. When they were when they were announcing their names mm-hmm. and trying to to kind of, you know, bother them a little bit or yeah, get she, them all fired she up. She was saying that um that you know, 20,000 drunken fans screaming your name and that Lanny would um next to her go Barnes, 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 Barnes while they were shooting. Like they would, <laughs> they would trade off doing that for each other to get inoculate them, you know? Right. So yeah, like that's gotta be a trip, right? Y'all, I can only imagine a whole different level of competition there. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like what the, I've given a couple speeches in front of <clears throat> big audiences or like air quotes big, but probably not that big, maybe only 300 400 people or something. So I can't even imagine like that level. That'd no. just be, I don't like people watching me work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I walked into a classroom this morning, um, in a new building that, you know, like I said, we were, my, my company had a, an office in Maynard, Texas, not far from here. And then they just, we just switched up to a new office in Pflugerville. So the one in Pflugerville has this humongous classroom. There's, there's gotta be a hundred seats in there. And I walked in this morning and I was like, oh, this office is beautiful. And I get to the, to the actual, the, the, um, the classroom and it's just, there's three like 80 inch TVs right next to each other. Boom, boom, boom. You know, no projector or anything like that. It's huge TVs and everything's paired and, and, um, man, there's so many seats and I immediately was like, oh boy, I need a beer. Like, <laughs> sit, oh boy. I need to, I need to, I need, I need to chill out a little bit. Cause I mean the biggest, the biggest crowd that I've talked to and my, my classes are usually between two and four hours. So it's a oh, yeah. pretty decent amount of time. And the biggest crowd that I've dealt with is about 120, 130 people, 120, 130 students at the same time. And that was like, I, I, I'm not even going to lie. I definitely had a Xanax right before I went into that thing. So I was <laughs> freaking out. There, there is a tipping point to where like everybody just blends together. Yep. You know, and then you're like, have I just been talking to this one person this whole time? Yep. You know, there's kind of a weird thing. Like eventually you catch like someone nodding mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, then you, you feedback. That you, person's giving me feedback. And you go straight to that person <laughs> and you realize they were yawning or they were, yeah. they were saying, yeah, uh huh, to their buddy or something yeah, like that. Exactly. Like, Whatever. I'll take it. That's fine. Yeah. Just, just move. I don't care. Yeah, just, I, just going for it. I thought about that this morning, but you know, that's that's another one. That's that's actually um, one of my bullets on my list is is drinking at matches. Mm-hmm. So that's something that you know I've I've done it I've done it um, every match I've shot every major, mm-hmm. whether it's a beer or a case of beer after right after okay. yep. And that's something that that I'm going to make an adjustment to for this season. I'm glad you brought this up because this is not something we talk about on the podcast, but it's yep. something I've thought about a lot. Me too. And, uh, back in the day when I would, um, so I, the, the context I was thinking about this is, uh, um, I'm signing up for a race, right? Like a running race. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking like when I was 18, 18, right. You know, remember how good you felt when you were 18? Mm-hmm. It's like two years ago for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I see the gray, the beard. Uh, you got tattoos that are older than that. What are you talking oh, about? I do. Oh uh, yeah. So I was thinking like when I, when I was 18 years old and I was running like my first, uh, five mile race. Right. Um, which was, uh, the Cherry Creek sneak, um, in, uh, in Colorado, <clears throat> I was really concerned about five miles. Like now five miles doesn't seem like that much, right? but, um, I was really concerned about five miles. So I did not, uh, drink cause I was 18. Right. Right. Um, I, I didn't drink for, I think, two weeks leading up to it. Wow. And at that time, like, I didn't drink a whole lot sure. anyway. So it wasn't like, I, but when I did, I was binge drinking because it was in college. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Right. Right. So two weeks leading up to it. And then I think like, okay, cool. So now I've got this, this uh, athletic event, 
where I need mental clarity, visual acuity, and I'm going to go have, you know, a margarita at dinner the night before. Right. Yeah, and it, it's it's one of those things where they, I mean, I've been a construction worker. Yeah, or a pitcher, right? I've been a construction worker since I was, I don't know, 18 years old, mm-hmm. and I'm 39. So I think it's I think it's something that it's like part of being a construction worker. You're supposed to drink beer when you go home. Like yeah, that's just I I don't know. There's maybe there's I'm nothing wrong. better than like a long hard day's work outside. I used to mow lawns <laughs> when I was in college, right? Uh, at a golf course, nothing better. Right. Get get off at two. Go have mm-hmm. a beer. Yep. And it, it's something that you know. Just about two or three weeks ago, no, it was two weeks ago. I was um I was doing a little trail run by my house that I always do, and it was one of the first times that I didn't listen to to like a podcast or I didn't have any music playing or anything like that. Um, and I was thinking to myself, you know what, when I get home, I'm going I'm to figure out. And when I, when I say get home, it's like 15 minutes from my house, 20 minutes from my house. I'm going to talk to my wife and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, kind of get something out. I'm going to, I'm going to stop doing something. I don't know what it is going to, I'm going to do, but something's going to stop, you know? And really, yeah, like what, what was going on in your head? Did you have, were you like, oh, I just need something to do? Or is it like, I feel like I'm doing too much or I feel like, I feel like so, so for me, unless I'm like working on something in my house or loading ammo or something like that, as soon as I have a beer, I'm not doing anything that like athletics are out the window. Yep. Um, it, you know, for the most part, you know, I, I don't, I might have a beer and drive, but anything over a beer and I start getting a little weird, I'll, I'll call an Uber, you know, mm-hmm. and whatever. But I was thinking in my mind, I was just, you know, I didn't have anything to, to kind of keep my mind going while I was running. So I started thinking like, you know, if I just changed and, and tweaked a little bit and stopped doing, you know, in my mind, I was like, you know, if I make, took sugar out, you know, or, or adjusted, you know, I, I'm not really interested in like, you know, taking some um, keto type diet or anything mm-hmm. like that. Like I, I'm not into the fat diets and my wife's a, a nursing student. So I get a, I get a ration of, you know, this is good and this is bad and, you know, and it, whatever to each their own. It's awesome to have that, that, uh, influence in your life to run stuff by like, right. Hey, I'm thinking about this. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, she's been in nursing school for two years and just about done. So it's been, it's been just the last couple of years where she's just, it's, it's cool. It's super cool to say the least. That's great. But I got home and I told her, I was like, you know, I want to cut something. I don't know what it is. And she whiskey immediately. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, doors over there, woman. Yeah. I, it, <laughs> I remember I'm thinking in my head, well, first of all, it's bourbon. I'm not a savage. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. <laughs> oh, damn it. oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's use that button real quick. Have you ever had someone who's like, uh, oh, uh, Matt, you're into whiskey. I got this nice rye. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Appreciate that. Yep. So she immediately said that, and I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" I was thinking something like sugar, and she's like, "Well, you don't even, you don't even really eat sweets." And I was like, "Exactly. That's why I'm gonna cut it out." Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's uh, sugar in bourbon, right? Oh yeah, which is unfortunate for sure. But you know, the, the conversation went a little further, and we were kind of bouncing some ideas off each other before she went to school. And I thought about it, and I was like, you know, I've been drinking beer every day, and for like I don't know, twenty years, maybe twenty one years, right? And I, I, it's not because I really, I, I couldn't tell you that I want to or that I need to, or maybe I do need to. I mm-hmm. don't know. Maybe it's a habit. maybe I'll just straight up die if I don't drink a beer after work or, you know, it's, and it's not like I come home and drink a case, you know, I, I'll drink two or three beers every day or have a, you know, a couple bourbons or something like that. But I thought about it a little bit more when she left and I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. I'm going to start right now. So that was the first day. I mean, in, I don't know. I, like I get sick and I wouldn't drink for a few days or something like that. But I went the first day and it was kind of weird. You know, I, I had done a few things to occupy my mind. But by like day two, day three, I felt like, you know, I'd walk past a bottle of bourbon. Like I have a bottle of Four Roses at my house right now. And I'd walk past it in the kitchen. I kind of look at it and I'd look at it again, like kind of, I don't know, sort of obsessing about it. And it, it just kind of fueled me a little bit more. And I was like, you know what? It, there's there's no reason for me to to be freaking out like it's yeah. fine it, if my body's not going to freak out if i don't have like some weird chemical like reaction or, or lack of something and my body's not freaking out then it's fine it's just a mental thing so i turned it off a little bit and you know i went i went the the work week without drinking and i had a, a couple of drinks over the weekend and then I, I traveled for work the following week to north carolina like i was saying 
And I did the same thing there. I just didn't drink. And I mean, when I travel for work, um, I don't want to say that I'm, I'm staying in, you know, like world-class places, but I don't eat McDonald's to say the least. Like we eat, we eat well and, and, you know, we stay in nice places. So when all my colleagues are having drinks, it was kind of, kind of weird and kind of awkward at first because they're used to me having drinks with them. But it got to the point now where, um, you know, I, I've noticed that I'm sleeping better, you know, my clarity, I have to perform at work and I have to be able to field questions on the spot. Mm -hmm. I, I deal with a lot of people that have very short attention spans including myself. I have a very short attention span too. So, um, just, just kind of making those adjustments. I noticed that I was just like on fire, like yeah. constantly. So I started playing with, uh, you know, a little bit at, at a, um, I shot a Tuesday night steel match and, you know, I hadn't had any drinks the night before. And obviously I didn't drink before I shot. And I had a couple of stages where it was just like autopilot crush everything, you know? And, it just, it brought me to the point where I started thinking about it and I wrote it down in, on my, on my list of things to talk about <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, dude, you know, I, I remember trying to dig myself out of a hole at the Trigun this year. You know, I had a, a really rough, um, day one and I tried to dig myself out of a hole. Well, the night before, um, day two or the, the night of day one, we went back to the Yoder's house and, um, you know, I, I lit it up. I got some spotted cow and <laughs> I tore that shit up, dude. You know what I mean? We had, we had a little bit of bourbon too, Kim and I. And, uh, next thing I know the Yoders are asleep and Kim and I are down there just, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a time zone or what it was, but you know, I went to bed at like midnight, you know, and woke up the next morning and, you know, kind of felt like shit. Yeah. And, and now I'm, that's another problem with alcohol is like, uh, you can't go to sleep when you have half a beer, you know? So it's like, well, we got to finish this one. Right. And then someone's in the middle of a story. So you're like, well, get us a fresh one. Right. And the next thing you know, it's like, shit, we got to be shooting in like nine hours. Right. And I think that's, that's just something this year where I'm going to, I'm going to make some adjustments and, um, and see what happens, see how I'm going to perform. I mean, I yeah. haven't, haven't not had the opportunity to even shoot a club match since I started this little, um, I don't know, hiatus. You're I shooting guess. this weekend, right? I'm shooting a, a rifle match this weekend. Yep. Let me know how it goes. I will. I'll be. I'll be interested to know. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where you know you, regardless if we look at it or not, and and how we condition ourselves, whether we go you know full Josh Tarrant and just you know or or, or either Josh pick you mean your, like hard, hardcore or alcoholics, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like hardcore athletes. Right. You know? Um, it, whether you go to that extreme or not, we're we're athletes and we're mm -hmm. we're playing you know a game that athleticism goes a long way yeah. and the lack thereof is a well, hindrance. And you know what, what happens when you drink, like your vision goes, right. your, um, your decision-making goes, yep. you know? And it's like, you don't get all that back hundred percent just cause you slept. Right. You know, it is some sort of reduced, um, capacity. Right. Back when, uh, when I was still working, and uh, I was going to uh, CrossFit hardcore mm -hmm. all the time. We're doing a ton of obstacle races. And then I was also shooting club matches for three gun. <clears throat> um, my gym would do like these 30 day challenges. And I remember one time we did uh, a 30 day challenge. And I can't even remember what like the criteria was, but it was, if you're in the three gun show patron group, it was similar to the 30 day challenge that we just did. Right. I kind of modeled it around that. Um, but one of the things was like no alcohol. So it was like no alcohol, no fried food. I don't know, you know, whatever, just there's a series of things that you had to do. You had to go to your, had to go to CrossFit, had to do some sort of other, um, exercise activity, whether that was like walk the dog, walk around the block, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Um, there was water requirements, just like a, you know, challenge yep. kind of thing. Yep. And I remember at the end of the 30 days, just like my mind would not quit with ideas and motivation and I was working hard and like, I, you know, I knew what everyone in the lab was doing. Cause I, I just told you I was a uh, project manager for 75 person lab. Mm -hmm. I knew what everyone was doing every day, you yep. know, that sort of thing. Like I was just like on fire. I didn't have to look at any notes or anything. And uh, yeah, it's there, there is like a, a different feeling from that, you know? Yep. I, I often wonder if, <laughs> If uh, the juniors in the sport excel so much because <laughs> the, the adults are over there poisoning themselves after after uh, day one, dude. Yeah, you're you. 
Super accurate. Mm -hmm. Super accurate. I I know it. I mean, shooting with um with Daniela D'Angelo, just watching. You know, we'll we'll walk a stage. Um, and she'll 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 come up. She's she's like most teenagers, right? She she doesn't have a an incredible attention span. But we'll walk a stage, and I'll show her my stage plan. Um, or somebody else will show her a stage plan, and she'll walk it like maybe once. And kind of, to me, it appears that she's kind of like half-assed paying attention. But in reality, she's taking it in. And I'm walking this thing, you know, 10, 12 times. And I still, mm-hmm. you know, miss a couple marks. Or, um, you know, I, I, I don't get the, the reload exactly where I wanted it. Or something goes wrong and, and I, I, I screw up my stage. But her, on the other hand, she's just a machine. Like the way that, that her younger mind processes and the fact that she's not poisoning it and she's <laughs> not doing the same things that I'm doing to my mind. Um, uh, it's just different. Mm-hmm. You know, it's different. I think you're, I think you're absolutely right. Um, there's definitely like a, a difference too, as far as like the, the food that I take in as well. Right. Um, you know, when you, when you can string together, you know, we did a ton of those challenges, but when you can string together like 30 days of clean eating or something like that yep, and combine it with, like, uh, no alcohol, like you are on fire, like as far as like, uh, uh, mental clarity. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> I remember, uh, one of the ones we did was, uh, the whole 30. Have you ever heard of that? Mm-mm. There's dude, it's seriously a strictum. It's like no sugar, no xanthum, no guar gum, no blah, blah, blah. Yeah. No, no <laughs> canola oil. So it's like, if you get cashews you got to make sure that they're either roasted in some sort of other nut oil or uh you can't have got you can get raw cashews mm. like you can't have which like, are horrible i yeah. can't stand eating those things oh really i actually kind of learned to like them after that but, oh i bet <laughs> but, uh like uh bacon's another one bacon's like real big in you know crossfit and and weightlifting and stuff like that right mm-hmm. it's made with sugar you can't have it unless yep. you get it from this guy over here who dry ages it or whatever. And now it's like 13 bucks a pound. Like it was that restrictive. Right. And mm-hmm. so absolutely no sugar whatsoever for, um, for 30 days and like nothing else you're, you're eating like completely clean. You're working out every day and stuff like that. <clears throat> and then the, the protocol was like, you start introducing things back in. It's like, maybe you have some dairy and then for a day you don't. And then maybe you have some grains and then for a day you don't. Right. Right. And then you kind of see like, oh, what does my body react to? And like, how does it do that? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this girl I was dating at the time, she like, uh, she went to the same gym, but she did not enjoy the the challenges nearly as much as I did. So she was like going out of her mind. So the day after the challenge ended was the Super Bowl. Oh boy. And we went like had a bunch of Coors Lights and wings and chips and guacamole and stuff and the next day like i felt like ass yeah like every joint was sore it you know i felt like an old man yep it was crazy you're dehydrated right oh i mean you're you're dehydrated dehydrated. plus now you you introduce grains into your body which you never have so you're inflamed Mm -hmm. right like you can you can actually see your your fingers are bigger than they were yesterday yeah you know it it's just it's a trip but that's how like most people are walking around like Texas for as wonderful as Texas is most of the food around here is absolutely terrible for you. It's a lot of Cajun influence yep. in this area and a <laughs> lot of fried shit. Mm-hmm. Right. So you have to really try hard to, to get away from that, that type right. of stuff. And that is the type of stuff that inflames you. And what do we eat on ranges? You know, when they have a, a food truck or when they, they feed you, it's like hot dogs, hamburgers, uh, buns, and then fried everything else. Right. Mm. Yeah, I've gotten to the point where at a range, um, I, I ate I ate a hamburger this year at off one of those Roach Coach type things at a uh, the the soul the single PCC match that I'll probably shoot. I don't know if I'll ever? I don't know if I'll ever shoot another one, but <laughs> I shot it and it, it was, was pretty the fun. Arizona PCC championship. Yeah, that was a yeah. big one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was fun. Um, it was fun. It was air quotes fun. I mean, it was a great match. They did a great job, but it's just not my thing. Right. Like, yeah, it's just not my thing. But okay. I, I ate a hamburger there. Other than that, you know, I'll eat some of those. Um, you know, Travis has got me. Travis gave me some of those Wenzel Farms. Oh, um, yeah. Beef sticks. 
when I was at Surefire, he gave me like one or two of them and I've been hooked. I've been, <laughs> I've been bothering Rachel about it and, and talking with Adam about it. And I love those things. So I, I bought, I, I ordered a bunch of them on Amazon. I keep those in my bag. You know, it's yeah. just something that, you know, doesn't go bad. I'll eat those. I'll eat bananas. And that's, that's pretty much it. But yeah, the, the drinking thing, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that as it pertains to three gun, which is a game, right? Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes, you know, all of us need to be reminded that it's a game. I mean, we invest a lot of time and energy mm-hmm. and money and resources to it. But if you're if you're going to play the game and you're spending thousands of dollars and you're I, and I, I'm I know I'm not the only one doing this, but you're doing if you're if you're spending that kind of money and, and allocating those types of resources, I guess is a better way to put it. And then in between, you know, day one and day two, you're just out there getting lit. Like, okay, are you there to shoot? Or are you there to to get lit? Because I can do that at the house. Yeah, you know? and that's just me kind of rationalizing with myself. Like, well, and and then are these are the, is this a sporting event? Is this uh, a game that I'm competing in, or is this a boys' weekend? Right. And I think we blend them. You know, we blend yeah, them. Yeah, for sure. We, well, we blend and them the sad in. thing is, like, it's a it 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 makes you want to do that because it's like a reunion because yep. there's all these like-minded people. They're yep. cool as shit. It's like, Matt, dude, mm-hmm. I haven't seen you in three months since, you yep. know, the, the last match we shot together here, right. have a beer. Yeah. Especially, I mean, and I know you've talked about it on the show or I, I don't remember what podcast it was where it was really that, that point hit home, but you talked a little bit about, um, or someone talked a little bit about those reunions while you're trying to do stage walks. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, now I'm starting to see that, you know, when I'm, when I'm walking at a major event, you know, people want to catch up, they want to talk and it's like, man, <laughs> I, I really want to, I really want to talk to you, but I'll talk to you after this match, maybe <laughs> <laughs> or at least after I walk my stages. Right, 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 right. Yeah. That's, that's come to bite me a few times. And I mean, walking stages, that's a, that's a, a whole nother thing. That's actually on my list. Good segue. Nice. So see how I did it folks. Yeah. Boom. I'm going to try, I think it's this one. Nope. (laughs) But. (laughs) Somehow funnier. (laughs) Were you looking for the swoosh? I was looking for the, I don't know. I forgot now. (laughs) I'm, I'm kind of, it's been a long couple days, bro. But, um, what was I saying? Son of a bitch. Uh, stage, stage walk, stage plan. Yeah. There you go. So this was at, at shooter source this year in 2019. John Murray and I went out to it. And I tried to, I tried to basically take on his approach to stage walking, which John is, John has a memory that is just impeccable. So he'll walk a stage once or twice and it's in, he's solid, he's mm-hmm. good to go. And I tried to do the same thing. I'm like, oh, John's doing that. I'm going to do the same thing. And next thing I know, I, I have no stage plan and I have guns and I'm on the clock and I'm supposed to be shooting. And I, I did that for a stage or two and I realized, all right, this isn't about trying to chameleonize myself to someone else's style or someone else's technique of planning. Like I require a significant amount of time of planning before yeah. I can execute and feel good about it. So, so, that, so I do too, especially on the pre-walk, yep. like the day before. Yep. And I've, I've found there are certain people that, <clears throat> that uh, I've walked with that I enjoy as a person. And I enjoy shooting with them, and I I appreciate the advice that they give me, but I can't walk with them because they're like you said, they're like their level of remembering and retaining things. Like, oh, th- that's an array that we shot at this match over here. That's just like this over here. Okay, cool, I got it. Next one, and I'm like, no, 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 I, I want to go find every target, right? And that's that's one of those things, and and especially if you're walking with someone, like if you're if you're shooting tack or limited and you're walking with someone that's shooting open, you're talking about, you know, stuff in quads and reloading and oh, things yeah. like that. It's like, yeah, I, nine times out of 10, um, if I need to reload, I probably screwed something up. Like mm-hmm. I have, I have 29 rounds in my pistol and 60 rounds in my, in my rifle. And, you know, I, I guess the shotgun's always something that I'm reloading, but it's just different. So I, I, I learned real quick at that match on the, on the clock that that's not going to work out. So, when I went to um, the tri gun, I kind of did the same thing. I kind of bare bones did it like a bare bones approach to to stage planning, and it just it didn't work out at all. Yeah, it it was it was brutal. It it was still super brutal. So, um, one person that 
is I, I have to talk to him and find out how, how it went for him this year. But <clears throat> earlier in the year, I was talking to Jay Christensen mm-hmm. and he said that he was going to go find every target, just kind of run up and down and then walk away and then catch it all in the five minutes uh, before, uh, before he shot the next day. Mm-hmm. And I thought like, wow, that like goes against almost everything I've for ever a season or like for a match. Uh, at a match. So, mm-hmm. like, say there's 10 stages. Mm-hmm. So, you go to stage one, you see where all the targets are, and maybe walk up and down the lane, and then go. Mm-hmm. Like, don't even, like, air gun nothing, don't video nothing, don't write anything down. And then the five minutes before that stage on the next, or on your first day, is when you're going in your programming and, and doing doing your uh, your 100% walk. Mm-hmm. So, he's just kind of getting a feel that on the walkthrough day, and then five minutes is where he's dedicating everything to it. Mm-hmm. And the way he was saying it is that he was just obsessing too much, um, especially the night before where he'd be watching videos and and thinking about them. And then he's like, oh, and I'm now I'm mixing up stages. And so he just was kind of getting a feel for it. Mm-hmm. But me, I'm, I'm like the complete opposite. Like I want to write everything down. Me too. I want to make uh, diagrams. I want to go get my stage plan 100% and then I'll walk away. Right. Yeah. When Kim and I went to, when Kim and I went to Surefire, I had a conversation with him. I remember telling him like, Hey, I just want to let you know that I need to walk stages. So I don't know if like, I need to walk stages and take it in and I need to take notes. And that's, that's just how I need to do it. And Mm -hmm. making sure that I'm going out of my way to explain to my travel partner that, Hey, I'm all about anything that you need, but I need you to be all about what I need, which is I need to take some time and it's probably going to be more time than you're accustomed to. And he was like, no, no, it's all good. You know, it's I need good to, to have those thing. expectations set up front too. Right. And, and that's something that I, I learned. And, and I had, had I told John Murray, Hey dude, um, you know, I need to take a little more time. I I'm a hundred percent, um, positive that he would be completely okay and, and totally good with that. But it went so bad for me that I made sure I went out of my way to tell Kim that. And he, you know, it worked out just perfectly fine. I mm-hmm. mean, I, uh, I screwed up a, a whole, I, I had my stage plans just fine. It was my shooting that, <laughs> that got me at Surefire. <laughs> but e- even then, um, you know, the, that, that match was interesting because I'm still, I haven't worked out um, like first stage jitters at a, at a three gun match, at a big match yet. And that's an interesting one. That's, that's a difficult one to, to get away from. I remember at the, the first stage we shot at Surefire, I saw, I saw one of my squad mates um, that I know is an accomplished shooter did he 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 drew his pistol and as soon as that as soon as he pulled I think he shot one shot and his mag fell out of his gun so he hit his mag release and I remember looking at that and and watching him do that and thinking oh dude like that's a that's kind of a rookie mistake I can't believe he did that and I I shit you not <laughs> like I was I was a few people behind him and I went and shot and I did the same damn thing Dude, like literally, I grabbed, I gripped my gun in a different way than I normally do, and I hit the mag button because I, I'd, I'd run one of those extended um, mag release type things. So is, is that? I wonder if that's like your brain focusing on something you're not supposed to be focusing on, and then like manifesting it. You know, like saying like, "Hey, don't drop that glass of water," and then I, boom, you drop the glass of water. Right. Yeah, it, it could be, but in my mind. Like I had never really done that. I mean, I'd done that with the big like paddle buttons and I've adjusted them and I was like, all right, these paddle things got to go. Like this isn't going to work for me. And I went to a, like a, um, a round, you know, smaller profile, round gnarled type thing. Mm -hmm. And I had never had that issue. So I was legit watching him thinking, why would you ever do that? (laughs) Dumbass. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking (laughs) that in my head and then I did it. So it, and I think it was a, it was a, it was my nerves, dude. You know, I, I drew that gun and then, you know, I was shooting with, you know, really accomplished shooters and my, you know, I was jittery the whole time and I put another mag in my gun and I, you know, I finished all right, but it, it's, it's something that I'm looking forward to harnessing, you know, and, and really dialing myself in this year. That's, that's a big one for me. So I've always had this, like I was, I was just telling you about, running a five, five mile race in college Mm -hmm. from that, that race, the two five K's I did before that every other race I've ever done every competition, including club matches, I get barfy before I have to perform. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) (laughs) at at the last match I shot, which is a UML trad natties. I'm like over by my truck, like, Oh, 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 oh," you know, and like not barfing, but just like, I can't, 
stop like heaving, you know, I'm like spitting and stuff. And Gil is, looks at me. He's like, what the f- is your problem? <laughs> <laughs> like just barfy in the morning before I, before I have to shoot, man, I'm sorry. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Cause I'll be sitting there and I'm like making ready. I'm like, oh, 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 oh boy. Yeah. It's, it's a trip. And then after that first stage gone, nothing. Yeah. It, it's interesting. I, I hate saying that because I know someone's going to come fuck with me now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is that, um, you know, people take it differently. You know, the, yeah. the more major matches you shoot, the more you're going to, you know, condition yourself to take that in. Um, but, you know, I, I've, like I said, I, I read Lanny Basham's book um, for, I don't know how many times I read it, half of it on the way to Louisiana, on my flight to Louisiana last week and the other half on the way home. And, you know, just using some of those techniques, it's, it's, it's super big. And it's not just like a shooting thing. Like I, I use a lot of those techniques, like, cause I'm the same way before I, you know, present at a class, mm-hmm. it's the same thing where, you know, I'm, I'm kind of jittery. So I tell myself, you know, you've done this, I've literally done this a hundred times or more, yeah. you know, and, and, and kind of conditioning myself for it. Um, but then, you, you know, I talked to Kim and I'm, I was I was talking to him about three or four months ago about this, and he's telling me that he never never experiences that. He's never yep. he's never nervous before before a match. And I kind of I I thought about that a little bit, and immediately you know I internalized what he said, and I took it and made it about myself. And I immediately mm. I told him something like, "Well, when you when you start seeing your name go up the the food chain a little bit, I think you're going to start experiencing that a little bit more." Oh, you just dropped a seed in his head. Yeah, and and. <laughs> But Kim's like, Kim's one of the most mentally stable and strong people that I he think is. I've ever known. Yeah. Like he is, he's a, a rock solid individual. I've never seen him get over like a four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've never seen him upset. No. Never seen him, never even barely seen him, you know, nervous at all. Mm-hmm. And maybe, maybe there's, maybe it was just me, you know, trying to defend myself in a, in a, you know, it's kind of a subconscious way or maybe it wasn't, but you know, it's, I, I told him, I like, I, that's one of the most awesome. I mean, we've had the conversation a few times since then, and I, I wish that I was that way. But by the same token, if I wasn't nervous and I didn't get that rush of adrenaline, I'd probably be doing something else. Yeah, right? You know, I, I dig it. I love it. I yeah. like overcoming those type of things, and it's it's awesome. It's it's interesting because, like, we're all, as humans, we're all trying to chase some sort of endorphin release, right? Right. Well, some of us. Yeah, well, is is everyone trying to do that? I don't know, because like some people uh, like self medicate, and maybe that's part of it, right? Right? Yeah, it it could be, but <clears throat> then you, I mean, when you take that away, when you take like for instance, self medicating with with alcohol, going back to our previous conversation, mm-hmm. I've noticed now where you know I have a couple a couple whiskeys or a couple bourbons or or whatever before bed, and man, I I'm. I'm going to bed immediately. My wife will bitch at me about, you know, she's, she's jealous of the fact that I put my head down and I'm out. Oh man. As opposed to like the last few weeks, I put my head down and next thing I know I'm, I'm up on my computer, you know, taking notes for something that's in my mind, you know, or or something, whether it's work or or home or shooting or whatever it is, just, or, or, or even just doing, you know, dumb shit like playing around on Instagram or looking at people's people's uh Instagram posts but yeah your mind's going like crazy still so yeah it's interesting that that unfortunately it's happened to me quite a bit over like the last couple months I've had like a bunch of nights where I'll just uh you know be like oh my god it's like three in the morning like how am I gonna how am I gonna get to sleep how am I gonna get up tomorrow because I gotta do that thing you know right and then you wake up and you're like, oh, thank God, I got some sleep. And you're like, oh, it's 4.30 now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's different. It, it is. Um, but that that that's like traditionally what um, the way that I've been, even mm-hmm. since like being a little guy, like I would just lie in bed for hours before I'd, I'd go to sleep. Mm. But um, but there was a time in my life when when I could just like hit that pillow and I'm just out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And unfortunately that was when I had a living girlfriend and she always wanted to talk. It's like, God damn it. <laughs> this is my time to sleep here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be sharp, man, I mean, I, I sleep is a big part of that. Huge. Sleep is a huge part of that. So sleep yep. is where you, where you do everything. I don't, so I, I recently listened to a uh, podcast on sleep uh, on the Joe Rogan podcast. Mm-hmm. If you're interested in it, I'll recommend it to you before we go here mm-hmm. for the rest of you. You can find it in the show notes. I'll, I'll put it in there. 
But um, so that makes me pretty much an expert. But um, <laughs> anyway, like the you're surprised at how much you actually learn in your sleep. Like the things you're doing in your day to day life, you're doing them, but where you make those neural pathways is in your sleep. So if you go out and you learn a brand new thing and then you get a shitty night's sleep, you're going to be shitty at that. Mm-hmm. If you go out and learn a brand new thing and you get a good night's sleep, you're going to be good at that. Right. So in your practice sessions that you do on Saturday and then go home or, and then I don't know, maybe go out on Saturday night and party. Mm-hmm. Like that's probably not doing you any good. You might as well have not even done that practice session. Right. A mind blower that is, right? Like yeah. in your conscious waking hours when your eyes are open and you're doing things, doesn't matter near as much as when you're sleeping. Right. So same thing as as your stage walkthroughs. Right. Yeah. It's 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 interesting. I mean, listen to a, a Joe Rogan podcast. If you especially if you can every once in a while I'll try to that's one of the few podcasts where I don't chop it up into multiple sessions. I usually I wait until I have, you know, a solid 18 hours to listen to one podcast. <laughs> they are freaking long. <laughs> and I check them out. But um, yeah, he's, he goes pretty deep. He goes pretty deep. And it's, it's a lot of stuff where you, you listen to a lot of it. I know that in my, in my experience, I've, I've listened to a lot of those type of podcasts where it's obvious that the decision is obvious. The best, the best yeah. choice is super obvious, but are you going to do something about it? Dude, I tell you what, like I know a lot of things that I should do and I don't do them. Oh and God. And to have those two parts of your mind, like watching yourself not do them, you're like, what is wrong with me? Like, I know that I should be doing this right now. Mm-hmm. Weirdest thing. It's so weird being a human. Right. Um, I found that podcast if you're interested. It's number 1109 with Matthew Walker. And uh, he wrote a book called uh, Why We Sleep, Unlocking Power of uh, Sleep and Dreams. And it is fantastic if you have a spare two hours and two minutes. <laughs> I was just about to take a, fi- a picture or have you text it to me, but I guess I'll listen to this podcast yeah. and it'll remind me. I'll send it to you, bud. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, another thing that that I've been hearing a little bit lately, mainly in pistol shooting, but I've heard it, I've heard it, I don't know, in the last year or maybe the last year or two is people talking about saving open for when they're older. Yeah, so that used to be a, a thing that we heard a lot on the podcast. And recently, that's... No, everybody's going open. Right. Well, I mean, if you think about it, it if you if you think about people that like we were talking earlier, it, it it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to compare your to compare an open shooter to a limited shooter. Like you wouldn't you wouldn't compare a Formula One car to a stock car. Like they wouldn't they probably would never race ever. Right. And it's one of those scenarios where with with open, um, you know, you I I don't know how how people think that. I mean, maybe, maybe years ago when, when the matches, I've seen matches from, you know, years ago when they weren't, there wasn't as much athleticism involved, but looking at it now, it's like, bro, life's, life's pretty short. You know, if you're going to yeah. shoot open and you want to, you want to, you want to race in the formula one, you know, you don't, you don't see guys that are, you know, that are starting out in, in, um, in, in open at, at an older age and being, you know, too horribly successful at it. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen too many people. I mean, the few people that I do see, they know, and I know that they're never going to be competitive ever and they have a good time and yeah. they enjoy it. But, and I look forward to, to being, you know, in my sixties and, and, and enjoying it too. And I'll sure shit still be shooting open then, but you know, that that's an interesting one. I, I, yeah. Uh, Cause like if you, if you stop and think about it, Matt, like if I gave you a, 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 a rifle, like if I gave you that Galil right there, so mm-hmm. for people that are not sitting in the room with us, <clears throat> it's got iron sights on it, right? Because mm-hmm. I have my optic on a different gun right now. Right. If I gave you that, what would be the first thing you did? Probably put an optic on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, because mm-hmm. shooting iron sights is slower and more difficult. And by optic, I mean two of them, unless I can fit three. <laughs> unless I can fit three. And then we're do- yeah, exactly. One on, on each section of rail on that thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so it has been decided by many wars that having a dot on your rifle, having a scope on your rifle is much better than not, right? Mm-hmm. We know that. Mm-hmm. And now we're learning that on the pistol mm-hmm. in, in, uh, in combat areas. But we've known that in... Uh, um, IPSC and USPSA for decades. Yep. And that's the reason that we have different divisions is because everyone was get tired of getting beat by the dude with the dot. Right. So we know that's better. Mm-hmm. So, 
Yeah, the funny the funny thing is well, that it's stopping people. I, I hear well, I, I know the the cost of shooting open guns is is it's a big cost. I mean, I at this point, like like I said in the last time that, that we discussed um open shooting on this podcast, I mean step one to being an open shooter is making sure all your gear runs. Like it has yeah. to run. And a lot of times that comes at a premium. You know, you gotta buy that 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 awesome Atlas gun, you gotta buy that dissident gun. And you got to get a rifle that that you know works every single time, and and I think it's a big investment. I mean, my three guns, I'm probably 15k in in and what I in my in my main three mm-hmm. guns, and of course I have backups to 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 most of them. But it's a lot of money. It's it's I think that's probably one of the big things. Um, and I would imagine it's it's probably. I mean, I've shot open all but the one match, <laughs> if you remember. So, oh, I mean, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's, I think it's one of those things where it might be a little intimidating maybe, but I mean, thinking about waiting until, I mean, I, I've heard it, people telling me, I, I've heard people say something along the lines of, um, you know, I, when my eyesight starts going and I can't see my front sight anymore, I'm going to start shooting open. Right. And it's like, bro, you're, you're already, you're 40 right now. Like. You're gonna wait to your to your sixty. You're gonna wait to your fifty. Like, don't forget, it's not about just eyesight. Like, you have to sprint, shoot, sprint, shoot. Like, like every division, yeah. but everyone else that you're that you're you're racing against is doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and and you know, younger and newer models. You know. Yeah. Well, and y- you know, so you're you're a, a teacher by profession. Mm-hmm. <laughs> by current profession, <laughs> not to be confused with trade. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know that adults learn differently than children right yep and that's because i think that our ability to learn new things either degrades or changes over the years so if you're sitting there at 60 trying to teach yourself something that you could have learned when you were 40 Mm -hmm. could have learned when you were 20 you know what what are your odds of success you know will you be more successful in that endeavor if you start 20 years earlier right i think so yeah, I would imagine. Craig Outson told me recently, time will pass whether you make the change or not. You know, yep. so yep. it's uh world's gonna keep spinning. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So it's like nonstop. I know. So either you get an open now or you do it twenty years from now. Right. And really, is there that big of a difference? Yeah. There I, will be in the in the learning curve for sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I can only imagine just in the in the couple years or three years or so I've been shooting three gum seeing the evolution of what you need, you know, talking, talking about, you know, Oh, this guy's running a bag. Oh, better get my, better get my bag out. Yeah. Oh, he's running a bipod. Well, he's running a bipod and a bag. Oh my God. He's running a bipod and a bag and he's using his knee pad too. And Holy smokes. <laughs> it's like, it sets the tone. And like I was talking about, like I was telling you earlier about the last club match that, that, um, that a, a bunch of us shot, there was, I don't know, five or six open shooters, um, running great gear and great shooters. And I, I decided to use a, um, a, a big pump pillow that I'd borrowed for a particular stage where we were shooting some skinny Sammies at some distance. And, you know, some of my counterparts didn't do it. And, you know, my buddies that like group text buddies, like my, my homies. Right. And I was blown away. Like, what are you guys doing? Like, you're going to be, what are you doing? You know, and yeah. I watched them, you know, a couple of them an extra like 10, maybe 12 seconds on the stage just because of that. But it sets the precedence, you know, it sets that, that precedence and you, you got to jump on it, you mm-hmm. know, whether that's the kneeling bipod or whatever it is, you know, you got to, you got to stay up to date with all the gear. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, and you know, as far as like using the gear, it's, it's like that saying, if you can't go prone, go prone. Oh yeah. That's a saying for a damn reason, dude. You know? And so the dude that every time that I've like, Oh no, I got this on my knee. This is a chip shot. I've jacked it up and I've regretted it. So if you can use a pillow, use a pillow. If you can use a utter bag, use an utter bag. Right. Yeah. It's, I, and I don't know how many times I'm going to fall victim to to my own stupidity and thinking that I'm going to overcome it. <laughs> oh, this time's going to be, oh, I've shot off this Dude, platform. You're 100. 40. You should know that you Dude. will not overcome that. <laughs> Firstly, I'm 39. Don't don't put that on me, Ricky Bobby. My bad, my bad. But, When's your birthday? Uh, I just had it. It was October 28th. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, I mean, this happened. Um, we shot a three-gun match a couple months ago. I don't, I don't know, maybe two months ago. And Kelly Neal, he's like, I had asked him, Dude, are you going to go prone? And he's like, of course I'm going prone. Like, why wouldn't you go prone? Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, I mean, I could reverse kneel. There's, there's a good, a good, you know, a good piece of wood right there. I can get my rifle propped up on and I think it's perfect. And dude, uh, uh-uh. uh, 
not even close. I saw him go up there, go one for one. I was like, oh, I could do that. It'll be fine, you know, and nope, negative. Yeah. No, it didn't if, work out. For me, as soon as you break that second miss, it's like I should have just gone prone, you know? Right. Well, I mean, it, listening to or watching, um, I don't know if it was Nate or if it was Joel Turner, but one of them before binning, they were, I think it was both of them, they were running some drills where they had to shoot one for one or they were oh, right. really, really aiming for one for one or, or that's that was their goal. And I watched that and I was like, man, that's that's pretty smart. And I thought about it a little bit more and I'm like, why wouldn't you do that? Mm-hmm. Like, why don't we all wait until we have, you know, the sight picture we want and break that shot? You know, why why are we so sporadic and yeah. why, are, why are we so like, you know, nervous about it? And it's it's a good thing to start practicing, and that's that's something that that um, the few times that I've practiced since that podcast um, or since that I saw that post, I've tried to implement that. It's in my practice notes, that yeah. in my in my log that I keep. So that's a it's another good one. So I've been training a lot with uh, Darren Spada, yeah, and same thing. Like we'll, we'll actually stop each other if someone's just like flinging rounds. Yeah, like you get like one makeup shot, and then I'm just shouting stop. Yep, and we're trying to keep each other honest of like what does it take to acquire that first round hit yep and if it's 3.14 seconds and that's the fastest we can get it that's cool but two shots is going to be four seconds two shots or three shots is going to be 4.5 seconds you know right and it's it just once you see that on the clock and like how much that actually matters taking the extra time although it's hard in a match environment because you're like in such a hurry to get done you know but right but it really does matter, and it really does make a difference. Yeah, and I, I think it goes back to um, to taking the time and doing something about it. Like you, we all know, we all know that we need to slow down, but you got to do something about it. You know, yeah, you, you you can't just talk about it. Like, you know, it, it's one of those things where you have to do something. You know, yep. Like take the time, like have some discipline and do it. And that's that's a that's another one of my goals for twenty twenty is just stop talking and, and, you know, put it on the timer. Right. Nice. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. All right. So those are very good topics. We're kind of uh, coming up on a time crunch now. Do you want to go lightning round? Do you have anything else you want to bring up? This might be the, uh, uh, the Festivus episode. Matt brings his grievances to Austin. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to have to fight. We're going to, I got an aluminum pole over there. (laughs) We're going to have to wrestle. No, I'm good, man. It's I'm uh I'm just kind of trying to stay above water at this point with work. It's, it's a lot of travel, dude, nonstop. I mean, I flew into Corpus on Monday. I taught a class mo- uh, Tuesday morning in Corpus. I drove here oh. last night, flying to Dallas in exactly two hours, and then I fly oh. home tomorrow. Oh wow, I thought you were heading home tonight. No. Oh man, I fly to Dallas. I teach another class. By the way, you could have been to Dallas faster than you can catch a flight. Yeah, I've been, I've been actually uh, maybe not driving. Dallas is like a mess drive too. I've, I don't know. I've, I've done it. I've driven it and I've flown it. And I think Corpus is, is one of the few places where I got to be careful flying in and out of there because they, it's just a small airport. Mm-hmm. And I have gotten screwed over a few times, but Austin's pretty, pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. Austin's a good airport. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think they're easy about flying with guns. Yeah. I, <laughs> I haven't flown here with guns, but hopefully this year, maybe. Is there any major matches this year here? Are you kidding? Here? <laughs> yeah. In Austin? Yeah, there's a Texas three-gun championship. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got that, wait That's a big on one. That. Did you? got wait listening on that mother. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Yeah, yeah, I did too, actually. <laughs> you have to, uh, have to get bribe Aaron next time I see him. But there's also the uh, Texas tune-up. Mm, never heard of that $1,000 prize. One, yeah. one prize? One winner. So there's uh, first place is two grand. Second place, uh, by the way, what they say on Facebook precedes what I say here. I think it's I think it's a thousand for second place, and then it's five hundred for third place mm. in each division. Nice. And there's uh, open PCC and TAC ops. Mm. Sounds like uh, a lot of people are going to be coming out to uh, to cash in. So should nice. be should be interesting to see who actually heads up to the top there. Yeah. Should be fun. Yeah, that's an interesting one. When you put money on the table, yeah, that, that changes the dynamic quite a bit. Yeah. No prize is only money. Yeah. Kinda, yeah. Kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. What other matches are out here? 
Uh, so there's that. The DC project is going to be around uh, Halloween this year. Um, of course, we got Vortex Shooter Source that's up in the Dallas area. Right. Um, ETTS has like several big match or I guess several matches. I think of the big ones I know of the uh, Hard as Hell Texas. Um, there's there's like the Walking Dead match. I've never been to that one. I don't know how that one is. Um, I'm not sure where UML Traditional Nationals is going to be this year. Um. I hope it's not at the place it was this year, Cawthorn Cartridge or uh, 2019 Cawthorn Cartridge Club. Mm-hmm. That uh, tired of going to that range. I've been to so many different matches at that range. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I think that's in in the Central Texas area. I think that about covers it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm still kind of deciding whether or not if I'm gonna shoot shooter source or not. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to get into the the Magpul Texas Three Gun Championship, but. Yeah, I don't. I don't plan on coming to Texas a, a whole lot other than those two. Well, we'll see when you're here. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Matt, any final thought you want to uh, to leave the audience with? Mm, I thought about this on my way in, and I knew you were going to say that, and Ooh. I I didn't go too far into my thoughts, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna wing it. <laughs> and now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I think 2019 was was a, a solid year for competition and, and learning, and 2020 is going to be a year for me for um, just all out concentration and discipline. And I don't know. I I think this year I want to I want to try to get some more new shooters in into into our into our fun. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how to do that yet. I, I don't know. I mean, I have a lot of friends who are like, hey, I want to I want to learn how to shoot three gun. And, you know, I, I want to go shooting with you and. And I'll, I'll answer their, I'll answer that request with, are we shooting in the desert? We want to shoot a match. You want to shoot pistol, rifle, shotgun, all of the above. And then I think I overwhelm them. Yeah, I think so. Zero response. Yeah. So I, I'm going to work on that a little bit this year and see if we can't grow the sport a little bit more. Nice. I like that. Yep. All right. Everybody else challenge. You do the same. Yep. Bring it. Well, Matt, thanks for being here, man. Yeah. I appreciate you uh, come by the studio. You are welcome anytime. You got business in uh, Pflugerville. We will think of something to talk about if you can make the time and just uh, cruise by, and we'll uh, we'll we'll BS. We'll get the mics out. Awesome. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thanks for listening. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thank you for listening to the Three Gun Show. If you like this type of content, you can support us on a monthly basis for as little as five dollars per month by subscribing at Patreon on Patreon at threegunshow.com slash Patreon. That's P A T R E O N. You can also give your business to the companies that support the Three Gun Show, including Vortex Optics, IWI, and JP Rifles. Until next week, I'm Dave Hartman, and I'll see you on the range.